All right, so I want to come, cover some of the IAR's 2020 residential form changes. We are going to go through this rather quickly. Uh, we're not going to cover all the points. Uh, there is a presentation that you can download if you want to go through all of them. But virtually, as you can see here, all of the forms that are actually have been revised. Uh, what is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven forms have been changed. Now, I know that you're new since this is just the 30 hour course. So I will tell you that this is very common. There have been many, many changes over the years where they've tweaked things or added things. And that is actually one of the points of continuing ed. So that if there are changes, they can be made and made known to you practicing professionals. All right. So a lot of times they just move things around to make them seem easier. Here's a case of them just taking lines and moving them. So as you can see there in the green text that they're just reformatted so that they are closer together so everybody can follow the three choices that they have as an option. Here's another situation of where the forms were actually, words were just moved. As you can see, uh, they moved them from line 285 to line 280, just so that no, taxes one, two, and three would be situated closer together so that you as the agent have a better idea when filling them out. Uh, they've deleted some words and occasionally you will see some things that are added in or deleted out to make sure that there is some uh, non-ambiguity or to reduce confusion by eliminating things or adding things. Um, here's another one, those smart home issues that are coming available, you know, with like the ring doorbell or the Alexa uh, connected lights and uh, thermostats, that's the word I was looking for. So all of those are now tried to be captured so that you can help your listing seller know if he is going to leave that or take that or should it stay or does it really go? Is it real property? Is it personal property? Here's one that's always been under contention about when the buyer actually orders the appraisal. Now I've had several conversations with this uh, IAR's legal affairs department to discuss this exact line. And it used to say the buyer authorizes the lender to order appraisal immediately. And then what was happening is are these guys that were wannabe attorneys were going, well, they authorize them, but does that really mean they do it? So the stronger wording now says it directs the lender. And the reality is even that doesn't really matter because this is not a date specific issue. There is no date to do this because the word immediately has various connotations depending on who you're talking to. If you're talking about in the lifespan of a human being, immediately it could be two or three weeks. <clears throat> the point is this actually is actually irrelevant. There is nothing you can say or do that makes this point valid. IR will tell you that if you want to wait till the last day to order the appraisal and you're sure that it's going to be done in one day and get the information back and it doesn't change the closing that we have talked about, time is of the essence, then it doesn't matter. The only time that ordering the appraisal time frame is relevant is if that late ordering causes it to miss the closing date, which we did make date specific. Therefore, now it's an issue. So this is really just stronger wording to emphasize the buyer should not delay in ordering it. There is no date on it that forces them to do that. It can be tomorrow. It can be the day after tomorrow. It might be a week. As long as I don't miss the closing date that we put in the purchase agreement, 
it doesn't matter when I order this appraisal, all right? Here's some more stuff, once again, to further emphasize that the seller should not leave anything, which this should be logical, you know, all of that trash and debris is still personal property. And when you sell the house, it's going to go with you. But they've added more sentences or bolded things so that they, oh, I, yeah, it was in bold. Now it's more important. Okay. Um, they've gotten rid of or changed uh, the flood zone designation in the property because there is now a new way to which they actually disclose the flood zone. They actually do it in two separate sections. Now we have a thing called the flood area and the building use limitation. So there, are, there was two, one paragraph, it's now two. Um, there is some, in the purchase agreement, they have changed or added a date specific that says that there are two different situations by which the buyer must satisfy what he's doing. And if he checks one of those buyer limitation paragraphs, then he has to put a deadline as to when that contingency would be removed. Once again, more bolding so as to emphasize better understanding, not that it really changed the verbiage at all. Here's one is to uh, uh, a risk reduction or mitigation. If the buyer is buying the property sight unseen, then this is uh, to protect the broker and the loss mitigation so that he cannot be uh, held liable for that. Price now will be written out after the numerical is entered. Uh, more emphasization of what should stay and what should go and what's coming and what's going to be taken away. Now, here's one that does seem important to me. When you go under a first right contingency and you say, hey, I, well, the inspection is 15 days and financing is five days and whatever, all of those dates are become relative. And what I mean by that is they become relative to when you become the primary offer. If you are still in that first right position, none of those dates are in effect yet. When that contingency gets removed and you become the primary offer, your time frames now kick in and now you have 15 days to get the inspection in five days. There is one exception to this rule. The earnest money does not follow the primary or first right difference. You still must submit the earnest money, even though you are the first right contingency, based upon whatever you said in your purchase offer and they accepted, so your 15 days for inspection does not start until you become the primary but you said I would give you the earnest money in 48 hours, that still holds true. So that time frame does not have to wait till the contingency is removed. It is in effect from day one, all right? If you have questions or you don't quite get it, give me an email and we'll talk more about it. Um, some more uh, reasons to simplify contingencies and things like that. There's a removal of a contingency. Um, recording of the property. Uh, this is something new in the buyer's agency that tells the buyer, hey, be aware that you could be being recorded by the seller, both audio and video. And they don't need to give you permission or do not need to give you heads up. Indiana only requires that one person knows the conversation is being recorded. So if the seller knows, he doesn't really need your permission to do that. Okay? 
Um, clarify earnest money submitted on the terms of the purchase, even though it's backup. That's what I was just talking about. Even though you're the first right or a backup, you still have to submit your earnest money. Multiple offer, uh, change addendum. Uh, Fis FISBO compensation change. If you're dealing with either the builder or the FISBO, it's to establish the relationship between the broker and the seller, who's going to hold the earnest money and where it's going to be. There's two new forms that were added that you may want to worry about. If the final walkthrough is waived, then there is a form that will serve as a risk management or a risk mitigation tool so that the buyer can check off that he chose not to go to the final walkthrough. Same thing as if the buyer is buying the property sight unseen, some out of state investor wants to come in, uh, they would si sign, sign this new form called the sight unseen acknowledgement. So these are two new forms that have been in there. If you want to talk some more about those smart home devices, here's the video that the IAR has referencing that will show you their concept of what they believe is real property and what's personal property and things like that. All right, so this is just a quick change, current changes. If you have any questions about these changes, I would suggest you direct them to the IAR's legal hotline, not necessarily me. I'm not a practicing attorney, and this presentation is actually one that was put out by the IAR. I did not make this, so this is their presentation. If you have specific questions, contact your managing broker or check with the IAR and exactly what are they trying to say or talk about or something like that. All right, so hold on. We're going to go back to... Uh, the slide we we're at and the lesson on the 30-hour managing, the 30-hour post-licensing broker course. All right, hold on.